So in last video we had the introduction about Hilbert transform. In this video we will see the properties of Hilbert transform. Okay. So the first property is the Hilbert transform is applicable to any signals that is Fourier transformable. Second one, Hilbert transform does not change the domain of the signal such that it exclusively operates in time domain. So we know that x of t, if we apply to the Hilbert transform, the output is x cap of t. So both are in time domain. There is no domain transformation. Okay. And your third property is, since it is in the same domain, x cap of t is not equivalent representation of x of t. Right. x cap of t is entirely different from that of x of t because it has a 90 degree phase shift. Next property is Hilbert transform is a 90 degree phase shifter without changing its amplitude. The Hilbert transform of an even function is odd function and vice versa. So we have seen an example cos signal will be uh, changed into sine signal etc. Okay. Similarly uh, next uh, property is the Hilbert transform of a real signal is also real. Seventh property is a signal x of t and its Hilbert transform x cap of t have the same magnitude spectrum. So the magnitude of x of t and x cap of t is same. So how will you do the proof of this? If I take the Fourier transform of x cap of t, you know that x cap of t Fourier transform is x cap of f, right? So we have seen in the last video x cap of f is equal to minus j signum of f into x of f. So if I take the magnitude, you know that the magnitude of minus j signum of f is equal to 1, right? So this becomes 1. So what will be the value x cap of f is equal to magnitude of x of f. So both your magnitudes are equal, okay? So these are the basic properties. Now moving on to the next very important property that is the signal x of t and its Hilbert transform x cap of t or orthogonal functions for the entire time interval minus infinity to infinity. That is, it can be represented as minus infinity to infinity x of t into x cap of t into dt is equal to 0. Across the interval, it is equal to 0. Okay, now we have to prove this uh, orthogonality theorem. So, for the proof, you will start with using Parseval's energy theorem. So, what is meant by Parseval's energy theorem? You know that the signal, energy signal of the time domain is equal to that of the energy of the signal in the frequency domain right so what will you get uh, you can write it at my uh, as minus infinity to infinity x of t into x cap of t into dt will be equal to in the frequency domain right minus infinity to infinity x of f into x cap of f x cap this star this indicates the complex conjugate okay so you know that the complex for a real valued signal the complex conjugate is equal to x cap of minus f. So, so I am going to replace this x cap conjugate of f by x cap of minus f itself. So let us take this as equation 1. So you know that now you are what you are going to do in the next step is you are going to find out the value for x cap of minus f and then you are going to substitute in this equation. So proceeding with uh, now your intention is to find out the value for x cap of minus f. Okay. So we know that x cap of f is equal to what is the value minus uh, signum of f into x of f. Okay. So therefore x cap of minus f is equal to replace this f by minus f. So what you will be getting minus j signum of minus f into x of minus f. Right. So you know that signum uh, it is an odd function. Right. Signum of minus f is equal to minus signum of f. So minus into minus you will get plus. So x cap of minus f is equal to plus j into signum of f into x of minus f. Now you have got the value for x cap of minus f. Right. Can you substitute this in equation 1. Okay. So when you uh, substitute uh, equation 2 in equation 1 what you will be getting minus infinity to infinity x of t into x cap of t into dt is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of f. Instead of x cap of minus f, you are going to substitute j signum of f into x of minus f into df. So just reconfiguring the equation, you will be getting j into uh, integral minus infinity to infinity x of f into x of minus f into signum of f into df. Now you have to prove that, what you have to prove, you have to prove the interval 
is equal to 0 right so you are going to do further uh, simplification so so by means of Parsifal's and energy theorem you know that both your you can write it as both your uh, value of the signal and your complex conjugate are equal so if I take the multiplication of both the signal what will you get magnitude of x of f the whole square so same thing I am going to write it therefore x of f into x of minus f will be equal to magnitude of x of f the whole square I am going to just replace here in this equation so what you'll be getting minus infinity to infinity x of f into x cap of uh, sorry x of t into x cap of t into dt is equal to j into minus in, uh, infinity to infinity instead of x of f and x of minus f i have replaced by magnitude of x of f the whole square into signum of f into df so you know that ma mathematical function uh, signum of f is an odd function right so here you have a multiplication of an odd function and an even function. So the multiplication of an odd function and even function will give you an odd function, right? So that is the product of the odd and the even function is odd. Therefore, you know that the integration of an odd function over the inter uh, interval minus infinity to infinity will be equal to zero. So you can deduce that since it is a multiplication of even and odd function, the integral over uh, minus infinity to infinity x of t into x cap of t into dt will be equal to 0. So the next property is energy or power contained in any signal x of t and the energy and power in x cap of t are the same. That is the autocorrelation function, energy, energy spectral density, power spectral density of x of t and x cap of t are same. Okay. So if you want to prove this, again you have to take using Parsifal's energy theorem. If I take you, you are taking it separately, okay, energy of x of t and energy of x cap of t. So what is your energy of x of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity. So we have seen in the previous uh, proof, right? I can write it as magnitude of x of t the whole square into dt, which I can replace in the frequency domain as. So you know that time domain and energy in the time domain and frequency domain are equal. So I can write it at minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x of f the whole square into df if i take this as equation one so same can be applied for your x cap of t so what will be your energy of x cap of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x cap of t the whole square into dt so replacing this by frequency so what will be uh, what you'll be getting in frequency domain minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x cap of f the whole square into df now uh, substitute the value for x cap of f you know that it is minus j signum of f into x of f. So magnitude the whole square into df. So what will be this value? Ultimately this value is equal to 1 right. So 1 into x of f. So 1 into if this is 1 into x of f the whole square what what, what you will be getting finally I can write it that x e of x cap of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity magnitude of x of f the whole square into df. So uh, if you don't want to include this equation you can um, eliminate this because already you know that minus j signum of f is equal to 1 by means of uh, this explanation okay so what is this now you have got e of x cap of t is equal to minus infinity inf infinity x of f the whole uh, magnitude of x of f the whole square into df which is equal to now if i take this as equation 2 Equation 1 and equation 2 will be same. So I can tell that E of x of t is equal to energy in the Hilbert transform signal is equal to that of your energy in the original signal. Okay. So you have uh, one more last property that your uh, Hilbert transform does not act on low frequency signal. For example, if I take the low frequency signal as m of t and high frequency signal as, as c of t, if I apply Hilbert transform to this, your output will be m of t into c cap of t. So your Hilbert transform only will be applied to your high frequency signal. It does not act on your low frequency signal. That also can be included as one of the another property. So these are the important properties of your Hilbert transform. So in uh, next video, we will see the different applications and your numericals of your Hilbert transform.